Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch's life were 365 years. Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Briefly, this morning or this afternoon, I would like to speak to you in the next few minutes on the subject of walking with God. Walking with God. Now, the Bible says Enoch walked with God. The brief record of his life is written in the words, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's a brief record of one's life. The words, walk with God, indicates a deeply religious life lived in close communion with God. The words, and he was not, are explained in Hebrew 11 and 5, which says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him for before his translation he had a testimony that he pleased God. Oh, what a testimony to be pleasing In the sight of God. The words lived, beget, and died in this text reveals how brief and uniform our lives are. Brief, live, beget, die. Enoch was a man who walked with God, and using the story of Enoch's life, I want to share with you some very important points, maybe two, concerning walking with God. Just two. The first one is the companion of walking with God. Amen. The companion of walking with God. When we think about companion, we we think of one that keeps company with another. The companion for life's walk is a divine companion. For Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen, amen. Amen. The agnostic, the agnostic, and the skeptics ask the question, where is God? The Christian, the Christian like Enoch, Amen. While they are asking their question, the believers are quietly walking with God. 
in this divine companionship, we walk with God. Yeah. And we're able to say we, he walks with us. Yeah. And he talks with us. Yeah. And every now and then he tells us that we are his own. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have companionship with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Then there's a B part on that. The companionship for life walk is a faithful companionship. All right. Amen. We can trust in the Lord. Yeah. For he is faithful and he is just. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. Right. He does not desert us in the time of trouble. That's right. Unlike many of our friends. Yeah. All right. yeah. They're with you for a moment, but you let trouble come. And you won't be able to find them anywhere. Yeah, right. But God will be with us in our times of trouble. Yeah, right. David said in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light yeah. and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yeah, right. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. When, the, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come upon me to yeah. eat my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Yeah. The host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Yeah. The war shall rise against me. In this will I trust. Yeah. One thing I have desire of the Lord that I will seek after, yeah. that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life yeah. to, be to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his Temple. Yeah, yeah. For in the time of trouble, yeah. he shall hide me yeah. in his provision. Yeah. In the secret of his tabernacle yeah. shall he hide me. Yeah. He shall set me upon a rock. Yeah. Amen. Right. I shall not fear yeah. because I have a faithful companion. Secondly, and last, the demands of walking with God. All right. Hey, walking with God demands entire surrender. Watch out. Not partial surrender, Watch out. but entire surrender. Watch out. The name Enoch. It means dedicated, Watch out. <laughs> one yielded up to God yeah, yeah. to be conformed to God's mind, to God's will, and to God's way. Right. Oh, there is something in a name. Yeah. Walking with God demands surrender yeah. to God. Yes. Amen. Are you willing to say, I surrender all? Watch out. Oh, yeah. Amen. Not just part of me, but I surrender all. For to have this walk with God, he will not share you with another. That's right. For he says, I am a jealous God. Yeah. Yeah. And thou shalt have no other God before me. That's right. All right. That's right. He said, man cannot serve two masters. Yeah. All right. yeah. You will either hate one or love the other, right. or love one and hate the other. Yeah. Yeah. Walking with God requires entire surrender. That's right. Walking with God demands unbroken fellowship. As Enoch walked with God, he had fellowship with God. And the two were in perfect agreement. That's right. I hear Amos saying over in chapter 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Walking with God implies progress. Walking with God implies growth. All right. Amen. 
if you have been walking with God for 15 years, Watch out. for 10 years, or three years, and you have not grown, Watch out. All right. Watch out. you need to question your walk That's right. All right. with God. That's right. That's right. The very concept of walking is movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a forward progress. That's right. That's right. When a person walks, regardless of how slow. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Regardless of how slow you walk. You're still walking. <laughs> You're still moving. Amen. Don't be discouraged by those who say, oh, you're walking too slow. All right. You just smile and say, but I'm walking. Yeah. Yeah. With God. Yeah. yeah. And I'm growing every day. Yeah. A little closer. A little closer to him. Those who walk with God make spiritual progress in their life. Amen. That's the most important progress. There are those who want to walk with God that they might gain material progress. And most of the time, material progress, amen, interferes with your walk with God. That's right. Because That's I've right. learned the most stuff that you get, the farther and farther you get away from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Spiritual progress. Yeah. See on that second one. Come on. Walking with God demands, get this, get this. Complete separation. All right. Walking with God prohibits indulgence in sinful pleasure yeah. of this world. Yeah. So why would you say that? <laughs> well, the Bible says that God is light. Yeah. And those who walk with him will not walk in darkness. That's right. That's right. I hear Paul say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living yeah, sacrifice, sacrifice yeah. holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Walking with God demands complete separation. Yeah. Right. We wonder sometimes, we wonder sometimes, Reverend, yes, sir. why it is God is not hearing our prayer. Right. Watch out. Right. Watch out, Elder. It's because somewhere in your walk, Watch out. you have gone off to the left. Yeah. And God is still walking to the right. Okay. Yeah. You cannot have that companionship. You cannot have that communion with God when you are separated from God to the world. He's not a sometime God. He's not just a Sunday God. But he's an everyday God. And your walk with him should be every day walking with God. As I go to my seat, as I close out, there's a D part. And it says walking with God demands suffering. Here's where some folks say stop the train and let me get off. Those who walk with God will suffer sometimes. You will suffer from criticism and hatred that comes from others. 
for no reason at all. They will do it just because you say that I am a child of God. But I want you to know that when you suffer, you're not suffering alone. And I want you to know that when you suffer, you're not the only one who suffered. Jesus, yes, suffered because he was the son of God. A man who had no sin but became sin that we might have a right to eternal life. I heard somebody say, if Jesus had to suffer, oh, what about me? You see, we are here today celebrating the Holy Communion. We're celebrating the fact that one day Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. Yes, he did. He died for your sins and for my sins. Oh, they hung him high and they stretched him wide and he never said a murmuring word. He suffered for you and he suffered for me. And today we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. And if you never do anything else, you've already done enough. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us walk closer to God. And know that God will walk closer to you. God bless you.